بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين نويت التعلم والتعليم والتذكر والتذكير والنفع والانتفاع والإفادة والاستفادة والحث على التمسك بكتاب الله وبسنة رسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والدعاء على الهداء والدلالة على الخير ابتغاء وجه الله ومرضاته وقربه وثوابه سبحانه وتعالى السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته <coughs> الحمد لله We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we thank him that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yet again finds us inshallah ta'ala in a gathering of remembering him subhanahu wa ta'ala in a gathering of remembering him and reminding each other of him subhanahu wa ta'ala by first and foremost Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed us for having to um remind that by allowing us to remind each other of something of the life of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam um and um uh, and now inshallah ta'ala that we seek to uh, sit and Ha, try to learn something about having adab with the Quran, inshallah ta'ala, the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like we mentioned time and again, the entirety of the religion is an affair of adab. Is an affair of adab, like the scholars say, the entirety of the religion is adab. Is adab with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and adab with the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That the entirety of the religion can be, can be, um, uh, summarize in, into uh, this <clears throat> and thereby la last session alhamdulillah we oh, in our study of this book um atibyan fi adab hamalat al quran of uh, imam al nawi rahimahullah ta'ala translated as etiquette with the quran or adab with the quran the, the first adab which imam al nawi <laughs> impressed upon us was the adab of sincerity and today we'll be carrying on on the same way no doubt inshallah ta'ala but the key um the key thing with the imam was speaking about was before anything else is sincerity for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that actions without sincerity are indeed worthless and it show and shows how weak we are as this as slaves as beings that we are unable we are unable to perceive sincerity first and foremost within our own selves let, let alone let, let alone attain sincerity we we cannot even perceive sincerity that, that's how weak we are as human beings and if not for the tawfiq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if not for our reliance on him, and if, if not on us, completely depending on him subhanahu wa ta'ala to rectify us, khalas, like we, are, we, we as beings, we cannot even recognize sincerity within ourselves, let alone attain it. That is how weak we are as human beings. And Imam al Nawi, rahimahullah, and in that, no doubt, there is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we keep constantly striving, striving to, inshallah ta'ala, better ourselves, to better ourselves in the hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala places sincerity within us, places sincerity within us, not because we deserve it, because He subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the most gracious. He gives, he gives, and he gives to whoever uh, he wishes, whatever he wishes. And there is no greater gift that the slave can receive, greater than sincerity, greater than sincerity. Yeah, so um, Imam Nawi rahimahullah ta'ala, in this book, in this book of Adab with the Quran, the first Adab is what? The Adab of sincerity. So the other of ikhlas, having sincerity with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not engaging with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for anything other than seeking his pleasure subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah, that we don't make our engagement with the Quran a means for anything other than him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because anything other than him subhanahu wa ta'ala is ultimately is dunya. 
yeah, it's creation, yeah. So we do not seek, we do not make the the Quran a means to a, any worldly uh, um, aim or any worldly uh, benefit. Rather, all we seek is the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this was the point Imam uh, Nawawi rahimahullah ta'ala making uh, in what we discussed uh, last week from the book. So alhamdulillah, um, we seek to carry on inshallah ta'ala. And this again, this again shows us what the importance of what we mentioned time and again, that, you can, that, that, that the religion is not compartmentalized, even though it might seem like that for someone, especially a student of knowledge or someone who's seeking to study the religion, they might think, oh, this is the one aspect of the religion, other, uh, and they may see these as disparate or disjointed or independent subjects that we mentioned like, time and again, that is not the case, period. That's not at all the case. And like we just read um, on Wednesday, uh, Habib Abdurrahman Balfaqiyah, his book, uh, what does he say? You cannot have some of it except if you have all of it. Cannot have some of it except that you have all of it. So again, in your engagement with the Quran, again, the key is what? Is again, that, that you have your share of spirituality. Yeah, so every, everything needs to be in pre present. You have your share of fiqh that you, um, you, uh, you know the rulings as it relates that uh, to your engagement with the Quran, what is permissible and what is not permissible, and you and you have your share of belief, your aqidah, uh, that you 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 know what you believe with regards to the Quran. Yeah, you have your share of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the Quran. Yeah, such that when you engage with the Quran, you engage with him sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the in that you you. What you read of the Quran and what you uh, what you try to understand and implement of the Quran is in reality trying to understand and trying to live his life, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, because his life was basically the Quran played out, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So basically, that you seek to live the Quran, you seek to live the life of the Prophet, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So you cannot have some of the religion except that you without having all of it. Yeah? Or do you see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks the disbelievers. You want to take some aspects of the religion and leave the other aspects. Like the, the, the Kufa, the Mushrikun of Quraysh said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa okay, this is okay, we'll, we'll accept it. As for those things, you have to change it. We, don't, we can't accept that. Yeah? So not for us to pick and choose, and everything comes together. We are a religion, like we mentioned, of tafid, of unity. Yeah? We are united in worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and united in seeking him. And there's only, uh, and, and thereby, inshallah ta'ala, we carry on in our study of this book, bi Allah ta'ala, as we seek to benefit from it, inshallah ta'ala, from the Imam. Bismillah, Muhammad. Bismillah, Muhammad. Not seeking a worldly objective. The teacher must not make his intentions to teach for the purpose of attaining some worldly objective, such as wealth, leadership, influence, rising above his peers, gaining people's praise, or drawing their attention to himself. One does not dishonor his teaching of the Quran by hoping to obtain some favor, by way of an influential student who recites to him, whether the favor is in the form of property or some service, however small, or even a gift that he would not have received had it not been for his student reciting to him. God Most High says, whoever seeks the harf harvest of the hereafter, we shall, increase his, we, we shall increase his harvest. And whoever seeks the harvest of this world, we shall give him of it here. But in the hereafter, he will have no portion. Whenever desires... Whoever desires the immediate gains of this world, we hasten what we will to whomever we will. Abu Huraira radiallahu an, God be pleased with him, stated that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, Whoever learns knowledge by which one customarily seeks the pleasure of God most high, but learns it 
in order to obtain one of he one of this world's riches, he will not find the scent of paradise on the day of judgment. Abu Daud related this, related it with a rigorously authenticated chain. There are many hadiths similar to it. Anas, Hudayfa, and Kaab ibn Malik, God be well pleased with them all, stated that the Messenger of God, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, Whoever seeks knowledge so that he can contest fools the, with the scholars or attract attention towards himself, occupies his seat in the fire. Tirmidhi related it from the account of Kaab ibn Malik, God be pleased with him, and states it puts him into the fire, not objecting to students reciting with others. The teacher takes every precaution from boasting because of the many people under his tutelage and who patronize him. He is cautious of disliking his students reciting with someone else who offers them benefit. These afflictions put some ignorant teachers to the test, and they are clear indications of the evil intention and corrupt innermost metal of whoever possesses them. Indeed, they are sure proof of the teacher's lack of desire to teach for the sake of the noble pleasure of God Most High, since if he were to desire God Most High's by teaching the Qur'an, he would not have disliked his students reading with others. Instead, he should, he should say to himself, I sought God's obedience by teaching, and it has thus been achieved. The student sought an increase in knowledge by reciting with someone else, and he should not censure the student. We relate in the Musnad of Imam Abu Muhammad Ad-Darimi, Ad God grant him mercy, about whom there is consensus on his profound learning and leadership, that Ali ibn Abi Talib, Abi Talib, God be pleased with him, said, O bearers of knowledge, act according to your knowledge, since the scholar is the one who acts according to what he has learned and whose knowledge corresponds to his action. There will be groups who possess knowledge that does not go beyond their collarbones. Their actions contradicts their knowledge. Their inward state contradicts their outward. They sit in circles vying with one another until a man come, becomes angry with the one he sits with and so he sits with someone else, leaving the other behind. Their actions in these assemb assemblies of theirs do not ascend to God Most High. It is rigorously authenticated that Imam al-Shafi'i God most, ha most High have mercy upon him, said, I hope that people learn this knowledge, meaning his knowledge and books, with the condition that they do not attribute a single letter of it to me. Jazakallah khairan Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Bismillah, so carrying on on the theme of not seeking anything other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through your engagement with the Qur'an. And the reality is, you're not going to taste. You're not going to taste the sweetness of the Quran without, like, if 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 you do not seek, if you if you do not seek only Allah Subhanahu wa Taala with your Quran and anything that you do of your religion, seeking to draw close to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, you are not going to taste the sweetness of that whatsoever. Uh, it, it is possible, and that's dangerous, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala might allow you to taste something, and again, that's going to be a delusion, that's again going to be um, a delusion through which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala causes, like, tests a person with a greater trial, yeah? Um, and, and this is what uh, the people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are always wary of, that they're wary of whatever it is that they experience of sweetness in their sojourning unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in reality a uh, for as it relates to them, is a form of istidraj. Istidraj meaning 
a, a, a deluding miracle, a deluding miracle. So, so the person of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala manifests for them some opening, uh, that the, the wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not, ah, oh, there you go, uh, uh, that's about time. <laughs> As uh, yeah, I was wondering when that would come along, or uh, um, or yeah, that's like that's me. I deserve that. La, that such a person can never be a wali of Allah subhanahu wa taala. But the true wali of Allah subhanahu wa taala, when an opening is given to him or her, what does the person think? The person thinks this is a test from Allah subhanahu wa taala. This is a trial from Allah subhanahu wa taala. Yeah. Uh, the, the, this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala testing me. Yeah? Why? If, if, if miracles are a sign of sincerity and piety, what about the jal? The jal given miracles. Yeah? He brings the life to death. Uh, so he brings the dead to life. Uh, he, he, he performs all, many different miracles which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa has informed us about. Khalas. So, so this is a category of miracles which in Aqidah Ilan is the istidraj, delude, deluding miracles. So, and, and we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are not tested by these, yeah, these like deluding miracles uh, like, uh, or, de or openings, yeah. So, so whenever you, you taste any, anything of sweetness, first and foremost, it's not because of you, yeah, it's not because of you. Secondly, khalas. Like, <laughs> what then? What then? You still have to carry on with whatever you are doing, and perhaps now you have to now do more. Yeah. So, um, so the the point being, as a general rule, you're not you're not going to taste the sweetness of what you're doing, unless it is for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala alone. Yeah. Because whatever you seek with your actions, as you're going to see in the ayah, which is Imam Nawawi quotes, whatever you seek, you'll get. Whatever you seek, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala gives it to you. If you want to, if you want fame, khalas. If you are a person who has the capability to do that, khalas, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you the fame you want. If you want wealth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you the wealth and you strive for it, khalas. You strive for fame, you'll get fame. You strive for wealth, you'll get wealth. Whatever it is that you strive for, you'll get it. Yeah. But the point being, khalas, if you strive for sincerity, that's when you get it. Yeah. Inshallah ta'ala. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that that is the case for, for all of us. Inshallah ta'ala. The teacher must not, um, uh, and, the, and the imams of the religion, they say, um, the scholar, uh, it's, it's quoted from uh, um, the scholars, uh, they say, if, if the kings of this world, they knew what kind of happiness we have within us in our intimacy with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They would have raised armies to take it from us. If the kings of this world knew, had an, even an inkling, had an inkling to the, the, the pleasure we find in intimacy with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they would have raised armies against us. Yeah? And the point being here, again, you cannot... Um, the, the point being here, what, what we cannot desire what we have not experienced or we cannot know what we have not experienced and we, we do not know what we are missing out on because we have not experienced it. And that is why the, and that is why the imams of the religion, they have laid out for us the path. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at the head of them, Allah has shown us this path, the path of seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that you yourself are someone who is felicitous in this world before the next world. Yeah, so so, khalas, so for us, first and foremost, to realize that, that these people, like these people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has raised and elevated and run closer unto him, that what they do, they do. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed them to taste sweetness. Sweetness in his obedience and in his worship. And for us, we need to take, um, we need to draw a lesson from them, yeah, that they need to be an ayah for us, they need to be a sign for us, that khalas, we also need to strive in their footsteps, inshallah ta'ala, such that khalas, that we taste sweetness of the Quran. Yeah, we, we, ta we taste that, yeah, we experience that in the world before the next world. Yeah. 
لا لا like the companion الله عباد بن بشر رضي الله عنه خلاص he's he's taking arrows he's taking arrows like in the middle of the night imagine like the instinct of the person is would be to look he's taking arrows such that he was like a pin cushion and he's carrying on in his recitation of the Quran and prayer like what what does that even mean what does that even mean yeah for us if you stand in broad daylight and like a small child with a stone we'd like start flinching isn't it so, so, like, like they, they, these these things are real yeah we need to class that like, like we find if we find it difficult to believe it's because how how far away we are from the reality of such people that we find these things difficult to believe yeah the point being khalas, sincerity is the key that we need to strive for sincerity yeah if not what is the point just pack our bags and leave isn't it like if we are not going to strive for sincerity in what we are doing and that should be the first and foremost consideration in everything that we do if that is not the case, let's just leave in it. Like pack our bags and leave. What are we doing in it? Doesn't even make any sense. Doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Period. What are you doing? What are you doing Quran for? What are you doing prayer for? What you, like if there is no, there is no striving for sincerity. What? Yeah. Like what is the point? So the teacher must not make his intention to teach for the purpose of attaining some worldly objective. Yeah, such as well, first and foremost, well. <laughs> yeah, Allah bless, Allah bless the, uh, mashallah, the Syrians. In a, like, they, they don't take a penny. They don't take a penny. Like, mashallah, they're here now in Turkey, most of them. Like, they've lost everything. They've lost everything. And yet when they're here, they don't take a penny from the students. Yeah. Despite their circumstance, in spite of their circumstance. SubhanAllah. Yeah. Such as wealth, leadership. The next one, leadership. Class. Like we like, like the, and this is something very like. This is something, this is a sign of the end of times. Or it's like the sickness, this desire for leadership. Like, like even if we like, oh no, 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 I don't want leadership. But surely, you like, like people want leadership for the children. Why? This is the sickness of leadership. Like, why do you want to be a leader? Like, we consider wanting to be a leader as something good. But as the first, first sign of a good leader first sign is that they do not want it period like like the, like the, they don't want it period like look at sayyidina umar radiyallahu anhu when people tell him on his deathbed and they and he can't benefit them on his deathbed can he like like there's no point in trying to have like seek favors of all people with umar radiyallahu anhu he <laughs> like yeah come down and listen to umar radiyallahu anhu being told your son is of the best people you can appoint as a leader for the Muslims. And he was no doubt of the best people. Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhu. Like what does Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu say? It is enough. It is enough for the family of Khattab that one of them has to answer on the day of judgment for the affairs of this ummah. That's already too much. That's already too much. You want you want me to appoint my son? Says so that now he has to answer as well. Khalas, that's not going to happen. Yeah, hakada hakada the parent, the, out of their care and concern for their child. What does he say? Khalas, la leadership li, Let my son be. Let my son be. Yeah, hakada. Like we all like like this is this is the sickness like this is the, the this is, this sickness is so acceptable it's acceptable now isn't it yeah like yeah plus so of the first sign of a teacher who wants to teach for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa taala plus that they do not desire leadership they do not desire leadership yeah uh, influence influence. Oh, um, I can pull a few strings here and there. Class for what? 
Yeah. Pulling strings with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. Why are they pulling your strings with the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Yeah. Rising above his peers again. Class, what are you competing with each other for? Yeah. Competing with each other. Desiring what? You be better than others. Yeah. Your competition, not that you want to draw closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You want to be better than others. Class, yeah. Go, go, yeah, be with the Iblis in it. Ana khairun minhu, better than, I'm better than him. Yeah, of, uh, like, like of all things, you should hope that there are people better than you in the Ummah, isn't it? Like imagine the musibah on the Ummah if the, the, like, if the likes of myself and yourself are the best there is. <laughs> like imagine, like, <laughs> like that, what kind of a calamity that would be? Yeah, if that if if we were the best there is, if we were the best there is, so you should we should pray to God that there are others better, what like much 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 better than us. Otherwise, what are we to do? Yeah, again, all of these things. What like sitting and reflecting about these sicknesses shows how superficial they are, how silly they are, how stupid they are. Gaining people's praise. What are you gaining people's praise for? <laughs> yeah. Gaining people's praise. Yeah. Or drawing attention to, uh, or drawing their attention to himself or herself. Yeah. See, look at, look at all these things. Look at all these things. You know, you know, the, the, the education system, the education system pumps this into the children. All of these things. All of these things. And then we make a who and cry about X, Y, and Z, this and that and this. The, these issues are already there. And these issues are deadly, you know, for before you talk, talk about anything else. Like, we, like us who have come up through the schooling system, we know these things firsthand. We don't need to be told. We don't need to be told. Yeah. And what, what Imam Nawi is saying, khalas, that you seek to learn and to teach the Quran, khalas, these things are just like unacceptable. لا, لا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, no one can touch it except for those who are completely purified. <clears throat> no doubt an indication to wudu, the le le legally speaking, an indication to wudu, but in that, again, no doubt, there's an inner aspect like uh, Habib uh, Abdurrahman in the book is like every ayah has an outer aspect and an inner aspect as well. What about inner purity? Are we just going to limit ourselves to ritual purity, outer purity? <coughs> One does not dishonor his teaching of the Quran by hoping to attain some favor by the way of an influential student who recites to him. Whether the favor is in form of some property or some service, however small, look at look at the look at the biographies of the reciters. Look at the biographies. Like they would literally get irate, they would get upset, they would get vexed if someone offered them like some kind of compensation for their teaching. Like they'll get angry. Like, oh, what are you doing? You've come to like you've come to spoil and corrupt my religion. You have come to corrupt my religion with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hakada they were. Yeah. But they wouldn't take anything, anything, period. But like, I was just looking, like, they, they, like uh, I think it was Imam Hamza. Like they say, I would not even take a sip of water from my student. I would not even take a sip of water. He would walk in, in, in the heat of summer and he, he wouldn't take a sip of water from anyone. He wouldn't ask anyone. He afraid that such a person studied, so, some, someone might have recited with him, studied the Quran with him, and they might feel obliged to give him water because they studied with him, i.e. some form of repayment of the quote-unquote favor. They wouldn't even take a sip of water. Even a gift that he would not have received had it not for been for his student reciting to him. 
it's not reflective of anything. Why? Because they see all of this is compromising them with God. How can the people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the real people of the Quran, the, such as the people who the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ahlul Quran, Ahlullahi wa khasatu. The people of the Quran, they are the people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they're this, the elite, they're the best of them. And then the Imam brings forth the ayah of the Quran. <clears throat> وَمَنْ كَانَ يُرِيدُ حَرْثَ الدُّنْيَا نُؤْتِهِ مِنْهَا وَمَا لَهُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنْ نَصِيبٍ <laughs> The one who desires worldly benefits, the one who desires the harvest حرث الدنيا Okay, the, the translation is from the beginning of the ayah. Yeah, the translation, whoever seeks the harvest of the hereafter, alas, will give, the, give him that and ziyada and increase him therein. But whoever seeks the harvest of this world, alas, will give it to you. Yeah, will give it to you. But alas, in the hereafter, don't expect anything. Or the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, of the first people for whom the hellfire is heated up for, according to tradition, alim, scholar, and another, according to another tradition, qari. Yeah. Class. Like the, this person comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, I, I learned and taught the Quran so, so, so as to serve your book, or I learned and taught the religion so as to serve your deen. Class, the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kazat, you lie. You did it so that people would, would, call, would, would recognize you for that, and you got what you wanted, class, the fame and the adoration of the people. Class, now help is your abode. Yeah, and likewise the next ayah. Man kana yuridu al-'ajila ta'ajjalna lahu fiha ma nasha. So whoever desires, like the um, whoever desires immediate recompense, i.e., in this world, yeah, who desires immediate recompense, class, he can have it, enjoy, yeah. But khalas, like, like what do you, the, then what do you deserve in the akhirah then? Yeah. Again, this shows us what? A lack of faith, a lack of spirituality, everything. Again, like we said, you cannot have one except that you have everything. Yeah. And if you don't have everything, khalas, you don't even have the one which you seek. Yeah. So if you desire returns in the world, khalas, then what do you seek in the akhirah? Yeah, shows us what a lack of understanding of the religion, a, a lack of faith, a lack of faith that khalas, like, like the akhirah, uh, yeah, the, the hereafter is much better and more everlasting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is greater. What you want, Allah al akbar. The khalas, lack of faith, lack of understanding, lack of knowledge, lack of khalas. And they, khalas, everything is compromised. And then the hadith of Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever learns knowledge by which one customarily seeks the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. Man ta'allama ilman mimma yambaghi bihi mimma yubtagha bihi wajhullahi ta'ala. لا يتعلمه إلا ليصيب به عرضا من أعراض الدنيا لم يجد عرف الجنة يوم القيامة. Yeah. خلاص. The first, like if you like if we were to seek by what we would seek Allah سبحانه وتعالى we seek other than Him سبحانه وتعالى no doubt this is a type of shirk is is a lesser type of shirk in that. You associate in your worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that which you seek to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that you uh, have ulterior motives. Yeah, this is hypocrisy, isn't it? This is hypocrisy, is nifaq. And when the affair is of the greatest affairs by seeking knowledge by through the Quran and through knowledge of the religion, yeah, 
that such a person will not even find the scent of the paradise, let alone enter it. Yeah, he will not even find the scent of the paradise on the day of judgment. Yeah, again, Imam Nabi what warning us, warning us why? Because this is something ah, yeah, yeah, I know intention. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Yeah, we need to. Yeah, la. Oh, you know, you don't. Who who knows? Only Allah Subhanahu wa Taala knows. Yeah, what's in the heart? What's in the breasts of men? Allah Subhanahu wa Taala knows. You don't know. Yeah, yeah, we don't even know what what is it within our own hearts. Yeah. So Imam Nawawi khalas stressing the point. Yeah, that your engagement with the Quran, first see where your heart is. Yeah, first see where your heart is. Yeah, and constantly maintain that vigilance. Constantly maintain that vigilance. Yeah, it's so easy to slip. It's so easy. Yeah, it's so easy to slip for the one who has vigilance. So, what about us if we never had vigilance in the first place? Yeah. Sayyidina Anas Hudayfa radiallahu anhu and Ka'ab ibn Malik radiallahu anhu majma'in they said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said whoever seeks knowledge that he can contest fools why with scholars or attract attention towards himself occupies his seat in the fire i.e. you seek something of the dunya and even that khalas, something lowly of the dunya like this is like this stuff is just like like even though even of the Nafs, these are like very low things, like like to compete with others, yeah, uh, such that uh, you can, um, or you want to debate with people, or you want to attract attention. These things are just like, like, like if you wanted like wealth or authority and power and status and things like that, yes, those are bad enough, but this is like even worse. Like this is like, like, like this is like, Sickness within the sickness. Yeah. <clears throat> the, this is like foulness within the foulness. And this is like khalas. And uh, he occupies his seat in the fire. Khalas. Like, it, it not just enters the fire. There's a seat for him. Khalas booked. Yeah. Reserved. Yeah. Subhanallah. Like the, these things. Like these are the things we should like strive to, 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 to remove from our heart. Yeah, these are the things we should strive for our heart to be purified from. If not, then khalas, then what? Yeah, you want to learn so that you can debate and argue with people. And unfortunately, that's all people learn, isn't it? Like people don't know how to do wudu. People don't know how to pray. People don't know the basics of the religion. And yet they know, like the controversial issues, they know all the dalil, they know all the proofs, they know all the arguments for and against and how to review all the rebuttals, everything. Khalas, what? Like this was they, this knowledge that you have is not for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, period. Because if it was for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you would have given things their proper priority as the priority which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave it. You would have first learned things which you ought to know. And you ought to live by rather than learning things such that you can just debate with others, argue with others. Yeah. So again, Imam Manawi rahimahullah ta'ala telling us what? Khalas. Like watch your heart. Watch your heart. Why? Because the Quran was revealed upon the heart of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yeah. Innahu nazzalahu ala qalbika bi idhnillah. Yeah, it was revealed upon the heart of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Khalas, like it's an affair of the heart. Yeah, so uh, the next thing which Imam Anawi points out, is not objecting to students reciting with others. Yeah, like, like feeling, uh, like the teacher who takes every precaution from boasting because of the many people that is tutelage and who patronize him. Yeah, khalas, like, like, like the, the like you, the number of students you have is not a sign of your acceptance with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. And the number of people supporting you, not a sign of an accept acceptance with, uh, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. Nuh alayhi salam in his 950 years had 30 people. Had 30. Allah, Allah ta'ala alam. Yeah. 
the Iblis on the other hand, millions if not billions. Who better? <laughs> Who better? Not even a comparison. Yeah. The number of people you have, yeah, in your circle who admire you, who, who has nothing to do with that. Yeah. You you might be someone who's recognized in the community. MashaAllah, you're doing so much good work. Khalas, if it's not for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what do you expect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You get all the adoration and adulation and the accolades you want. Khalas, nothing to do with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <laughs> he is cautious. And this is this is one of the signs. This is the one of the signs like like you you take the appreciation of people as a sign of acceptance with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Yeah, this is this is one of the um, uh, easy easy traps of the devil, like that that you, just because people think good of you, have managed to dupe others that you have duped God. <laughs> Yeah, how? Yeah, religion not a popularity contest. Religion not a popularity contest. How many a prophet was killed by his own people? How many a prophet? Yeah, they didn't win the popularity contest, did they? Alas, but they are winners with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. They are muflihun. They are the successful ones with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Yeah, so the sign that people like you or people uh, praise you or people uh, uh, adore you or admire you, khalas, that should make you wary. You should be afraid. Yeah, that shouldn't make you happy. He is cautious of disliking his students, deciding with someone else who offers them benefit. And only a silly person, like a silly person, a silly, uh, uh, like silly in the mind and sick in their heart, would would do this. Like it's like first and foremost, you think like who do you think you are? <laughs> you you're getting worked up about you, someone who came to you going to someone else. Like who do you think you are? <laughs> like 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 really like in this fourteen hundred year history of this ummah. And in the like, just the names of the like, just the names of the people who have gone before us. Like, who do you think you are? Do you, like, who? Yeah, uh, and you like were getting worked up. The class, like such and such. I I I made time for such and such person. I gave them time, and I did X Y and Z. And now this person just gone to someone else. Like, class, like who? Yeah. Yeah, like first and foremost, who do you think you are? Secondly, like, like why, like, oh, who, like, um, not just who do you think you are? Why do you think you're better than others in the first place? Yeah, not just that you think good about yourself. You think not just you're good, but you're better than others. Yeah, he's cautious of disliking his students, deciding with someone else who offers them benefit. Yeah, so long as they're benefit, yeah, like Alhamdulillah in it. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has relieved you of a burden. Yeah, like teaching is a burden, isn't it? Like teaching is a burden. Yeah, like Imam Al-Ghazali says, you never aspire to become a teacher. Like never aspire to become a teacher. Like this is such a big burden. Like, why would you want to do it? Yeah. So, and when when there is someone else who can relieve you of that burden, you must be like, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. This is like amazing, isn't it? Mashallah. Like, there's someone who can teach, and there are people benefiting. Alhamdulillah. Otherwise, then you know that you were not teaching for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. It was not. These afflictions put some ignorant teachers to the test. Yeah, if you're seeking to serve the community, and there are some others who who are doing something better than that, Alhamdulillah. If not, you feel, oh no, um, my following has decreased because of them. Um, sickness. That's sick. Yeah. 
These afflictions put some ignorant teachers to the test and they are clear indications of the evil inte intention and corrupt innermost metal of whoever possesses them. Yeah, precisely. Yeah, this clearly shows what, how sick the person is, like spiritually sick. Like, like you're seeking to teach like the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you're upset for what? For your own self. As someone left you, <laughs> just go and sob in the corner, in it. Indeed, they are sure proof of the teacher's lack of desire to teach for the sake of the noble pleasure of God subhanahu wa ta'ala. Since if he or she were to desire Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by teaching the Quran, he would not have disliked his students reading with others. In fact, you should encourage, isn't it? You should find people who are better than you so that they can benefit, isn't it? Yeah, like when you seek to teach something, when you seek to, uh, like if you genuinely desire good for whoever it is that you happen to be teaching, then you should guide them to people who are going to help them better. Yeah, otherwise, then what are you doing? You just want to have your own plan, isn't it? And you want to feel important. <laughs> Instead, he should say to himself, I sought God's obedience by teaching. Khalas, I, 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 like I was put in a position I, and I had to do what I had to do. And khalas, like I, I did what I had to do. And now the student sought an increase in knowledge by reciting with someone else. Alhamdulillah, and he should not censure the student. And what happens, what, what, one of the problems, why? When it is all, it is a given that you are seeking something ulterior already like for example if you're teaching and and what you're teaching even though fiqh wise again fiqh is fiqh at the end of the day like you are allowed to accept payment for teaching you're allowed to accept payment for teaching and if so if if your student goes somewhere else and that bothers you why because Khalas, like, like, like I'm not going to get those payments anymore. Then Khalas, know that you are—that is what you were doing it for, and you don't, and 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 you are not fit to be a teacher. Why? Because if you're if you're going to be a teacher who te is teaching people the Deen of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and you cannot appreciate that your risk is from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and you you are now worried about the, the oh Khalas, if uh, these students go, then what? Khalas, then you're not fit to be a teacher. Do something else. <clears throat> and he should not censure his student on that regard. Yeah. We relate in the Musnad of Imam Abu Muhammad al darimi rahimahullah ta'ala, about, about whom there is consensus on his profound learning and leadership, that Ali ibn Abi Talib, karamallahu wajha, said, O oh, bearers of knowledge, act according to your knowledge. What is the point? Otherwise, khalas, like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, yeah, about the people of the book, they were given the book, but yet khalas, that didn't benefit them. They just did what they wanted to do. And the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, yeah, himari ahmil asfara, they're just donkeys carrying books. Yeah, i.e. they have books with them, khalas doesn't benefit them one iota. Yeah, oh bearers of knowledge, act to your knowledge. Since the scholar is the one who acts according to what he has learned, yeah, that's the scholar. Otherwise, what are you? You're just an academic. Yeah, you're just an academic. You're just learning stuff. You're just you're just studying stuff. You just have an academic interest. And unfortunately, in today's day and age, there's a bit, the, like 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 people think that khalas, like religion is just academic. Yeah, Hala, a scholar is the one who lives who lives the knowledge. An academic can learn all they want. That doesn't that doesn't inform their life one or other. Yeah. Um. According to what has and whose knowledge corresponds to his action. Yeah, that they act in corresponding to what they have learned and whose knowledge corresponds to his action. Yeah. This Allah Alam if it's a hadith. I think it might be the the one who acts according to what they know 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will then teach them what they did not know. Yeah. The key to learning is not to just learn more and more academically, is to live in accordance to what you know already. So when you live in accordance to what you know already, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens up for you more, says that class. you can live in accordance with the ziyada which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you, the increase. Yeah. There will be groups who possess knowledge that does not go beyond their collarbones. And we should all be afraid that we are of them. Yeah? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of all the knowledge that he has given us, like, what, like look at ourselves. We need to watch ourselves, like, especially when we are by ourselves. Like when we are by ourselves, like what, like, like how God conscious are we? Like how, like, like if, we are pious in front of others and sinning in private, then halas, like this is like the worst possible state to be in. This is the worst possible state to be in. What does this show? Your concern is piety in front of people and zero concern in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you're by yourself. What good is that? What good is that? Yeah. Their action contradicts their knowledge and their inward state contradicts their outward. Yeah. They sit in circles vying with one another. Hakada. Hakada. You'll see like, like, like quote unquote students of knowledge. Yeah. Um circle like, like just competing with each other. Why? Because they just, just want to be better than others. Yeah. And 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 uh, Habib Ali, uh, Habib Ali Al-Jifri, he says, he asked this question to his teacher. Uh, he says, I asked this question to my teacher, um, the, the question which every student of knowledge has, but no one dares to ask. I asked this to my teacher with regards to how does one become better than others? Yeah. How does become one better than others? Uh, the teacher said, by sincerely desiring that others become, are better than him. That you sincerely make dua that others are better than you. Yeah. And you sincerely desire that. You sincerely desire that others are better than you. Yeah. But uh, that's, yeah. But, but what happens? They sit in circles, vying with another, one another until a man becomes angry with the one he sits with. And so he sits with someone else, leaving the other behind. Yeah, this is the this is the um <laughs> uh, um uh, this kind of um what do you say? Um the irony of the the irony um of uh, the situation is that like you have you know foul character traits, foul character traits even like people who have foul character traits they can't stand that foul character trait in others like for example a person is arrogant like the person with least to tolerance to arrogance is an arrogant person when an arrogant then there's a person being arrogant in front of an arrogant person the arrogant person can't take it that when a person being proud in front of another proud person, the proud person can't take it. Yeah. Like, like, like a liar does not even respect another liar. It does not trust or respect another. So the people with all character traits, they can't even stand each other. Whereas the people with beautiful character traits, mashallah, they love each other. They love each other for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. So hakada, hakada. The state of such people that the that, that they, they, they do not like, like they, they see, oh, others, these are useless people. Oh, look at that. Why? Because you have such low tolerance because of the, that disease being present within yourself. Yeah. You can't stand arrogance. Why? Because of the arrogance within yourself. Yeah. Rather, if you were, if that were not the case, if you would have seen such a, an instance, you all you would have done is like you would have just prayed for the person. You would have just prayed for the person. Oh Allah, rectify my heart and his heart. Allah, rectify my heart and his heart. I suppose to the person who becomes angry and leaves. Why? Because he can't stand arrogance because he himself has it. Yeah. 
Their, their actions in assemblies of theirs do not ascend to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The, these, these gatherings, these gatherings, it's just all nufus, uh, it's just all egos clashing. It's just a gathering of egos, not a gathering of souls. Yeah. It is rigorously authenticated that Imam um, Ash-Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala said, I hope that people learn this knowledge, meaning his knowledge and books, with the condition that they do not attribute a single letter of it to me, i.e. khalas. This is not because I want to be known X, Y, and Z. I don't want to be. Uh, it's not because I'm seeking repute. I'm seeking reputation. I'm not, I'm, or, or I'm seeking uh, the appreciation of people. La, I want people to learn because this is beneficial. Yeah? If, if not for that class, it's, it's, there's no there's no need for me to do this other than that there's benefit in for people and I don't want any anything of it attributed to me. Not that I seek attribution. Yeah? Hakada Imam Shafi rahimahullah ta'ala. Yeah, so what, so so the, this section predominantly Imam Al Nawi rahimahullah taala is te like, like more so even though it's directed towards the teachers, um, we should all bear this in mind because we are all teachers. We are all teachers in some capacity or the other. We are all teachers in some capacity or the other, and. The, the thing is, this 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 is just a microcosm of the entirety of our life experience. Like everything, like like we just mentioned, like like a part, like the part is reflective of the whole, and the whole is reflective of the part. So we need to pay attention to these things. Perhaps we are already being tested with having to teach in a formal manner, or. No doubt, all of us in an informal manner, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, "Kullukum ra'in, or each one of you is a shepherd, wa kullukum mas'ulun an ra'iyati, and all of you are um, um, uh, will be made to account for your flock." Yeah. So when we teach, when we teach, as first and foremost, our our um, our own selves that we 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 hold ourselves to account and our children house like the like Imam Imam now is saying here wealth leadership influence rising above peers gaining people's praise or drawing attention to yourself house. like these are the things we should strive to like remove completely from our from our children not fill them up with it yeah. And removing is not an abstract thing that you remove these things. It is removed by filling their hearts with what is pure and what is good and what is praiseworthy and what is beautiful and what is acceptable with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's how you remove these things. These things which are foul and sick and, and blameworthy. Yeah, and worthy of chastisement, punishment. Yeah. Inshallah ta'ala. Yeah, so one must not think necessarily, even though it, it outwardly it's directed towards specific uh, towards the teachers. This is something which is uh, the, the, the council, no doubt, it has um uh, is of general uh, applicability, inshallah ta'ala. Any thoughts, comments, or questions, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Yes, please. Um, well, what's one of the practices we can do to ensure that our intentions are sincere? Because sometimes we might think we're doing something good, but in essence, we may be harming ourselves or we might be deluding ourselves. And how can Just, we? Yeah. Always so there's yeah. So there's two two important things which you can do. So firstly, um. Suhbat al-Salihin, maintaining the company of righteous people. Yeah. So wherever it is that you are, um, you should maintain company of righteous people. Not righteous people, meaning people who are concerned, like people who are concerned for their akhirah, not just people who are outwardly religious. Yeah. People who have a concern for their akhirah and an akhir and others' akhirah. 
So the, so be having company of the righteous people. Yeah, so that is important. You should maintain company of righteous people. Yeah, and if you cannot find com righteous people within your, you, sh you should start, you should seek them out. Yeah, you should seek them out and maintain their company. Yeah, and the other thing you ought to do is to you need to constantly study like what we do on Wednesdays. We start like, like Wednesdays is the day when we go through a um, books of spirituality. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and remind each other because reminding benefits the believers. Yeah, insan, they say the human being, the, the root word of the word insan, the human being is related to nisyan, forgetfulness, because a human being is easy, constant, is easily taken into a state of heedlessness, ghafla and forgetfulness, nisyan. Very easy for the human being to be distracted. Yeah. So that is why we constant Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says constantly keep reminding each other. Yeah. Constantly keep reminding each other. And that's that's the other thing you need to do. So you should constantly keep um inshallah ta'ala seeking to purify your soul by through different ways. One of the ways is by by reading the books of the people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and um, and also by maintaining the, the company of such people, inshallah ta'ala. These things no doubt have, will have a profound effect on you. And no doubt, dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and um, inshallah ta'ala, constantly striving in that regard. Always, um, the key thing is basically what, well, what does all of this result in? Like maintaining the company of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who are these people? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, who are those such people? The best of you are when the, these people are seen, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, people are reminded of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So what does this help you to do? Keep, keeping the company of the righteous, studying their books, um, and holding yourself to account. What is this? All of this is just making you be mindful of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Yeah? Being mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala constantly from the very from the moment you wake up to the moment you go to sleep, that you're constantly mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every moment, in every single moment that you're mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, and this is this is going to immensely help you, inshallah ta'ala, in maintaining your sincerity because so long as you bring to your mind that you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then other considerations will fall away, will fall away, says that there is no other consideration other than him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these are a few things you can do. Maintaining the company of the righteous, yeah? Maintaining the company as in that the, the, their company now rubs off on you, yeah? That their company rubs off on you. And, um, um, and studying as well. So these things, no doubt help, no doubt help in that regard, inshallah ta'ala. Yeah, so, um, and then, yeah. Just carrying on, inshallah. And the, the inshallah, the, the righteous, the company of the righteous will, inshallah, will give you more openings with regards to guidance thereof, inshallah. So hopefully that should help, inshallah. Inshallah. Anything else? Any thoughts, comments, or questions before we finish? Any thoughts, comments, or questions? Uh, it's it's interesting that etiquette of the Quran, Imam and now we basically he's teaching us how to live, isn't it? Like etiquette of the Quran is what is basically how we live. Like our entirety of our life is having etiquette of the Quran. Yeah. So it's not just, oh, when, I, when I'm sat here doing, or when I'm reading my Quran for a few minutes or so, that, that's not etiquette with the Quran. The entirety of your life is etiquette with the Quran. Yeah? And inshallah ta'ala, we'll finish there, bi'ithnillahi ta'ala, and carry on next week, inshallah. 
Um, Allahumma infa' Allahumma um, infa'na wa rafa'na bil Qur'an al-Karim wa ja'alhu lana imaman wa nuran wa hudan wa rahma Allahumma dhakirna minhu ma nusina wa allimna minhu ma jahilna wa rizuqna tilawatahu ana al-layli wa atraf al-nahar wa ja'alhu lana shifa'an wa shafi'an wa hujjatan ya rabbal alameen wa jazallahu anna sayyidana muhammadan sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amahu ahluh wa jazakumullahu kulla khair wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu